We have a major Ricky Tiedemann injury update highlighting whether or not he will be able to return at some point this spring. And we also have the secrets reveal behind Chris Bassett's pitching arsenal and what makes him so successful as a pitcher. So we're going to break that down and much more in this episode of Jay's Digest. What's up, Jays fans? Nick Goss here, host of Jays Digest. And before we do get into the video, thank you guys for the support. It's been unbelievable. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the daily Jays content. And the Jays do play the Yankees today, but I'm going to be focusing on a news portion for this video. And Peter will be back in the next one. But without further ado, let's get into the first topic, which is a big Ricky Tiedemann injury update that dropped around half an hour ago as of the time of recording. Now, as we all know, Ricky Tiedemann is our top prospect. He's the prized possession of the Blue Jays in the farm system, and he came out and pitched very, very well throughout spring in his brief, I believe, two or three stints there. But he's been dealing with an injury lately, and an update came out today from, or yesterday, this was the initial update yesterday from Keegan Matheson saying that number one prospect Ricky Tiedemann is now scheduled to throw a side session Saturday. It's been pushed back a couple times as he deals with left shoulder soreness, but he's been throwing on flat ground and we should know more after tomorrow. And today, of course, is Saturday. And this came out from Hazel May and Arden Zwelling as well, saying that Ricky Tiedemann shouldered through a side session today. Club will see how he responds this afternoon and tomorrow before determining the next steps. And Drew Hutcherson, of course, will miss his next um, start. But Thomas Hall says, fingers crossed on Ricky Tiedemann. So everything's going to, uh, according to plan recently, of course, he had his... Uh, he was planned to schedule a side session and then end up being canceled and it got pushed back to today and he's yet to throw it today, of course, but it's looking like he's looking okay and he will hopefully return to spring training at some point, assuming today's side session goes very, very well, which I'm assuming we won't know till maybe after the game tonight or most likely tomorrow, in which case we'll of course provide you guys with the latest update regarding that. But he is scheduled to finally throw his side session, which is big news because, like I said, it's been pushed back already a few times because of his shoulder soreness. And again, for a young prospect like Ricky Tiedemann, you do not want to mess around with any shoulder soreness injuries, any shoulder injuries at all. Of course, you know, you worry about Tommy John surgery and things like that. Now, of course, Ricky Tiedemann's injury doesn't seem too, too major, but the Blue Jays are doing as much as they can to preserve his arm and be as cautious as possible when it comes to Ricky Tiedemann. So it's good to see that he is going to be throwing his side session today and hopefully it goes well and he can ramp back up to start the season in double or most likely triple A, get some innings there and maybe make an impact for the Jays this season. But let me know in the comments if you're concerned with this injury or if you think it'll just be something similar to Vladdy's where he took a week or two off and then came back fully healthy. Okay, now let's get into the next topic, which is a very interesting one, which is Chris Bassett's secrets are revealed. So the article, uh, The Athletic posted an article going deep into Chris Bassett and I highly recommend if you have an athletic subscription to go you know read the article yourself I'm going to do my best to summarize it here I have an athletic subscription so I watched it today and it basically just discusses Chris Bassett what makes him so good because of course he doesn't have flamethrower stuff and his secret behind what makes him such a good pitcher and maybe what will make him an elite pitcher for the Blue Jays this season so again we'll highlight a little bit of the article here and this was like the first section and this kind of highlights the main secret so last year, no starting pitcher threw 100 innings and threw more different pitch types at least 10% of the time than Chris Bassett. He's working to keep that up by throwing as many different pitches as he can. And here is the big thing. Technically, I have eight, he laughed. I have two different change-ups. To lefties, it's more of a split change. And to righties, I have a true change. So I know if you guys have been following around Twitter, this kind of circulated a little bit as well. But Chris Bassett has eight pitches and he has different change-ups for the lefties and the right-handed hitters, which is... For one, just incredible. And like we said, Chris Bassett is a veteran pitcher, and me and Peter have spoken about it several times about what it takes, you know, to be a great pitcher in this league is whether you have, you know, flamethrower stuff or great pitches. And Chris Bassett has unbelievable control and he has unbelievable pitches. Now, he has struggled a bit in spring training so far, which has been a little bit unfortunate. But like the article says right here, he has eight pitches and he has two change ups to lefties. It's more of a split change and a righties have a true change. And for someone like him, it kind of goes into, uh, it kind of highlights what it takes for him to be so good and what maybe will make him so good this year. Because, of course, he is going to be playing against AL East opponents who are very, very good at hitting. But having eight pitches is kind of crazy. It's pretty unbelievable. And it was uh, it was interesting to see. And then here's another piece on the article, and then I'll summarize a little bit more. But 
One of his other pitches is his slow slider. They call it a sweeper. They renamed it. I don't know what the sweeper is. And it kind of goes to highlight one of Chris Bassett's most effective pitches, which is his sweeper slash slider. And a sweeper is technically a slider that has less drop than you might expect based on spin alone. Of course, a pitch made popular by the Dodgers, Yankees, and Astros. And it seems like Bassett has been throwing one forever without really intending to take advantage of the seam shifted wake. It's just a slider he throws. So this also kind of highlights, you know, the vast amount of pitches that he throws. He has a crazy good slider. He has, of course, his fastball, which he uses control, kind of similar to Hunjin Ryu in a way regarding that, you know, they don't have stuff that'll blow you away, but they have control. They have the poise and things like that. But one other quick thing I will touch on the article, which I didn't get a screenshot for, but if you just read the article, it kind of goes to highlight the importance of starters going deep into games. And they had tons of advanced metrics in this article discussing how basically when you go into games, you go deep into games, throw a lot of innings, it's really really good essentially is what happens and you know the hitters start to get unbalanced and then another key thing is that going so of course as we know that pitchers who you know pitch through the order three times tend to have not a lot of success the third time around you see that with tons of pitchers around the MLB the third time around I think we saw it a lot with Ross Stripling last year he would be pulled after two full rotations through the uh, the rotation and the lineup because after you know going through the lineup twice in a game the hitters start to really recognize the pitches but one thing that Chris Bassett does well is he hides a lot of his pitches. Of course, he has eight of them, so this kind of highlights this, but he hides a lot of his pitches early, so that way he can go through the lineup, you know, the third time around without them really understanding and knowing and seeing all of his pitches. And they use advanced metrics in there to really, really highlight that. And Chris Bassett does a phenomenal job negating the third time around penalty that has kind of become very, very popular around the MLB. You don't see too many pitchers besides, you know, the really high-end top-tier ones going through a lineup three times simply because, you know, especially if a pitcher with three or four pitches, think of Kevin Gosman, for example, with a fastball and a splitter, really a two-pitch pitcher. He has, you know, a couple others, but the third time around, Kevin Gosman's good enough to be able to go through a third time around, but for most pitchers who only have a couple of pitches or three pitches or four pitches, hitters start to recognize that and start to make adjustments so i just want to throw that out there it's a bit of an analytical article i read and i wanted to highlight it in a video in case you guys haven't seen it i know a lot of you don't have the athletic so it's very very interesting go ahead and read it if you want i don't remember who it was written by but unbelievable article and hopefully chris bassett will be able to do well this year so let us know what your thoughts are on that in the comment section and let's move on now to manoa opening day starter so this guy also tweeted today and it's not necessarily fully confirming but you know, basically as close as you can to uh, to confirming. So Arden Zelling tweeted uh, nine minutes ago as of recording, with less than two weeks until opening day, the Blue Jays are beginning to line up the season opening rotation. Decisions not yet finalized. Expect club to announce opening day starter on March 23rd. So that is five days away. As for the next few days, Manoa is scheduled to start on Sunday, Kevin Gosman on Monday, and Thomas Hall makes the observation that having Alec Manoa start Sunday would line him up perfectly to start on March 30th, which is of course opening day, and rightly so. So as we know, and as we fully expected, it seems to be that Alec Manoa will be our opening day starter, which means you think Alejandro Kirk would be catching him, but regardless... Alec Manoa, I think, deserves it. Now, I think Kevin Gosman is going to be an unbelievable starter for us this year. He got very bad luck last year, but, you know, Manoa loves the Blue Jays. He reps the Blue Jays. He was kind of a homegrown talent. So, being a homegrown talent, they're going to give him the uh, opening day starter nod. At least that's what it seems like for now as of, you know, today, March 18th. And we'll know for sure on March 23rd. But all the starting, you know, rotation lineups are air, leaning towards and aiming towards an Alec Manoa opening day start on March 30th, which is super, super exciting. I'm super excited for opening day. It's going to be... Man, it's been a long time coming. And today, of course, as of the time watching this video, we played the Yankees with a, basically a full-on, if you look at the lineup, it's like a full-on opening day lineup or very similar to opening day lineup. So everyone is starting to ramp up a lot for the Blue Jays now, especially the pitchers are going into the fourth, the fifth innings. We saw Chris Bassett pitch five innings yesterday. So everything is ramping up. It's almost time for opening day. But one quick final topic before we do wrap up the video is a quick Otto Lopez update. Now, he obviously played for Team Canada in the World Baseball Classic and was phenomenal, did very, very well. And he is very much in the running very much in the running for that 26th spot as maybe the fourth outfielder slash utility guy to hit against left-handed pitching. And he did end up experiencing some groin soreness after the World Baseball Classic that sidelined him a couple of days. But this got tweeted today from Hazel May saying, Otto Lopez rejoined his teammates following a nice showing at the World Baseball Classic for Team Canada. He was taking some light swings in the cage this morning, a day after the Blue Jays announced he'd been dealing with left groin soreness. So he's looking very, very good. He's back to swinging. So in case any of you are worried about Otto Lopez after his phenomenal Team Canada run, in the World Baseball Classic. He's looking to be okay. He's already back swinging, so we should expect him to battle for that 26th spot alongside you know Nathan Lucas and some of the others, Zach Britton, but I think Otto Lopez might be 
the guy to take that 26 spot, and I think he has the advantage to do so. And especially bearing any major injuries, I think he is the likely guy to take that spot. But let me know in the comments who you think should take that spot. But that'll wrap up this news video. A lot of news to get into today. It was a bit of a different style for the second topic there. I just wanted to highlight the Chris Bassett article because it was very, very interesting. I know a lot of you are maybe unfamiliar with Chris Bassett or becoming more and more familiar. So let me know if you like that style. And hopefully we also see Ricky Tiedemann get better soon. But thank you guys for watching. The support's been unbelievable. We'll be back with a pre-game stream tomorrow and do the usual there. We didn't take one today because Peter was super busy. But thank you again for the support. It's been unbelievable. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.